Welcome back to Ulti World's continued live coverage of the 2019 International Club Championships here at the U.S. Open in Blaine, Minnesota. With Cody Mills, I'm Daniel Prentice to bring you this matchup between number one Seattle Sockeye and number five Chicago Machine. Two teams, both with national championship aspirations. Both teams with aspirations of winning this tournament. So it should be a fun and exciting one here in round two play here at the National Sports Center. Cody, what are you looking forward to in this one? Uh, it's quite the gift that we get to see this game in pool play, and honestly, we could see it again later in the bracket. Machine, I'm looking to see how they integrate their new players. The Michigan Elite Men's Team High Five folded, and some of their best players have made their way over to Chicago Machine. They've also picked up a couple other elite club free agents, so integrating those new players. They're still without Kurt Gibson, but uh, among those new players, former Seattle Sockeye Zane Rankin. And from Sockeye, this is... Uh, a very similar team to the team that lost on double game point in the national semis last year to the eventual champions, New York. So looking to see their sustained success. They have gone through a bit of a coaching change with Roger Crafts moving on, but Sakai is always on the front edge of tactical innovation, as is Machine. So I'm curious to see what they've cooked up and how these two really top five teams stack up. Really excited to see them square off this early in the season. It's Johnny Bansfield pulling for Machine in red. It looks like it won't count, though. We have an early offsides call, so a bit of a hiccup here to this start. But Bansfield, one of those additions that Cody was discussing from Michigan High Five. So after that false start, we should get going here. Bansfield will once again go for the pull. I think he's probably glad to get that one back. It was sailing well out of bounds. And this one, much better, going to drop dead center in the front of the end zone. So Sockeye starting on offense through Simon Montague. Montague goes underneath to Phil Murray, and then he hits a wide open Matt Raider. Raider hitting another open cutter downfield in Jacob Jannon. So Sakai very early just outside the end zone. And drops it back to Montague. Montague back to Jannon. And then the inside forehand gets away from Jannon. So an early red zone turnover from Sakai gives Machine a break chance here in this opening point. You saw Sakai come down in the vert stack. Machine tried to flood the lane with a couple unders in a, a clam diamond set, but Sakai works through it right down to the end zone. And just Jannon tried to force that inside flick a little bit into the wind, and it popped up. No one to complete the play on the back end. And we get to see the influence of Bansfield right away as he's the one to pick up. Gets the disc back in his hands and is going for the full field right away. That one. Looks like it's tailing out of bounds. Good effort by Vaughn Alangilon to reel that one in, but the throw from Bansfield takes him out of the field to play. So Machine able to flip the field at least with their first D-line possession of the game. It'll be Dylan Freechild picking up for Seattle Sockeye. Uh, interesting fact about this Sakai line, six of the seven people played on the next gen tour. Well, it doesn't help them there as we see that throw from Murray pop up and get intercepted. Machine takes advantage of the second opportunity to get the break, short field opportunity this time. They convert break on the first point of the game. Yeah, a couple throws pop up in the slight upwind there from Sakai. Machine able to capitalize on the short field. A crossfield flick just catches a little bit of a gust. Peter Graffy there to D up Trent Dillon and flip to Walden Nelson for the score. Graffy, another new player to this machine roster. Formerly of Madison Club, I believe. So quite the collection of elite talent here for Machine. They also picked up Tim Schock from Boston Dig, as well as uh, Joe White and Keegan North. Johnny Bansfield, who you mentioned earlier from High Five. 
Paul Arders as well. Really just, I mean, Machine won the offseason, I would say, in the men's division with a number of pickups, really immediately becoming national championship contenders. Adding so much high-end talent that I think many expect will play pretty major minutes for this machine team on both lines. Truly the LA Clippers of the men's club division. <laughs> Certainly, that's, I think that's a fair comparison. I don't know that they got a Kawhi and Paul George type, but definitely a lot of very, very capable players. Joe White's pretty good, man. He is pretty good. Machine out in transition junk again. Looks like 2-4-1, kind of a look that Sakai is known for. Kassedner hitting a free child net underneath. Machine hits their transition. So, all right, trying to solve this machine defense. Free child settling for the reset to Raider. And there another turnover. That one blocked by Ross Barker. So this machine D-line winning the early battle in this game. They have another chance to break. And much like we saw from Revolution last game, Machine doing a really good job of helping off of dead cutters even after their junk transitions out. Seth Weaver resetting to Arders. Arders with the give and go to get to the other side of the field. Graffy with it now on that far sideline. And that one gets away from him looking for Weaver. The throw pops up on Montague. Caught just in bounds by Zachary Golson. And now Freechild looking to the end zone. That's completed. Bryce Dixon with the score. So the Sockeye offense doesn't look exactly crisp there on that second point, but they do get the hold. Yeah, Sockeye seems like they're still figuring out how to navigate the wind a little bit. Chris Kassedner had no problem with it on that flick hook out into space. But in general, they've looked a little sketchy in their throws. That wasn't the turnover. It was good help defense by Machine. But early game jitters. We'll see if Sakai can steady the boat in their upcoming points. And they will get their first chance to get a break. So they send the D-line out for the first time. So we'll get our first look here at Machine's O-line. It's no secret that Machine's defense is very strong. Their O-line has been subject to runs back and forth in their recent history. We'll see if any of those new faces make a difference in that trend. We see Joe White there, three on the line. And of course, Pavel Janis at four. Pavel Janis, one of the best huckers in the division, both in the AUDL and in the USAU circuit. They like to start him downfield and give him the disc in his hands so he can huck in motion. But he can statically huck as well. Christian Foster, another strong puller. Machine offense starting in their own red zone. Looking for it all right away. That one unable to be tracked down by Giannis. Jack Shanahan throwing too far. So the huck not zeroed in. And Sakai will get a chance to get that break back. It's Ben Snell picking up for Sakai. It's Billy Katz on the reset. Right back to Snell. Trent Dillon able to beat Joe White underneath. That should be a fun matchup. Watching those two go toe to toe. Snell soaking up reset touches. Hits Julian Hausman underneath. And Hausman is fouled on the mark by Alex Evangelidis. Disc back in play. Foster catching that one on the far sideline. It's Snell cutting strike. Katz follows in turn, resets it right back to Snell. 
Duncan Lynn, crafty forehand to Dylan, and then Dylan to the end zone for the layout grab. Sockeye gets the break right back on their first opportunity to do so. They take the first lead of the game. A clinical small ball from Sockeye off of the turnover. Willing to run those give and goes and take short yardage gains. Nice break by Dylan to finish it off. But Machine ran there, uh, a host stack, initiation play. Sockeye broke it up and Machine took a bad choice pretty quick in the point. Sockeye is a team that is definitely going to break up full plays, so if Machine can't dial in the decision making, it could be tough. They'll play the upwinder now. The wind's still essentially going left to right on the screen, a little bit toward the bottom. A little bit windier, I would say, than our previous round game. A little bit. We'll see what uh, Christian Foster is set to pull here for Sakai, one of the best pullers in the men's division. And it's that nice, it's a nice win for the OI backhand pull. He has a good one. We'll see if he can pin machine deep. Yeah, we saw Bansfield, who had the opening pull in this direction, make that adjustment off of the outside. Go back to the IO backhand pull. See the Sockeye sideline bringing a cone onto the field. There were complaints earlier about sprinkler head plates being visible and potentially dangerous on the field. As you see that big pull from Foster, it rolls out the back. Yeah, that's good work from Foster. Too sharp an angle to comfortably catch. Rolls it out the back. Give Machine the full 70 to go for the goal. And it's Yana starting the offense this time for Machine. It's a wide open Evangelitas underneath. Joe White able to swim underneath to get open there. Now unleashing a big forehand downfield looking for Shanahan. He gets up and makes the catch. Impressive grab by Shanahan. Machine just outside the end zone and there they punch it in Evangelitas finding Zane Rankin. So Machine it takes a lot of the yardage on that hook from White. They capitalize, get the clean hold. Yeah, good strong shot from White into the wind, but I think if you're Sakai, you're pretty happy with that defensive possession. Effectively, Machine came down with a jump ball and flipped it in. Joe White definitely loves his flick hook in the wind. We saw that in his college season when he was playing with Carlton Cutt. Was a huge upwind thrower for them. Unleashes a bomb there. Jack Shanahan able to body out Billy Katz. Catches it with his left hand, which uh, is the appropriate thing to do there as he's bodying Katz under the disc. So he puts his shoulder width between the high point and Katz. Good fundamentals for anybody watching at home. And White, the thrower on that big gainer to Shanahan, is our player to watch for Chicago Machine. Fresh off a dominant performance with the U24 mix team in Heidelberg just a couple of weeks ago. Led the team in points by a significant margin. Really just had a massive week. As a result of that, he won gold with the mixed team after having won gold with the men's team in 2018. One of just four players to accomplish that feat with his own teammate here on machine, Tim Schock, as well as John Stubbs and Tanner Johnson. So. And rare company there. Sakai out horizontal this time as opposed to Vert. And it's Raider who's going to snap off a big forehand across the field. And now Sakai in business. Jannon steps across and puts Dixon right outside the end zone, and he flips it. To Xander Quizon Tice for the quick and easy Sakai hold. And Machine came out again, e even against the horizontal stack, trying to play uh, a little bit of a junky set, which means there's going to be a poached cutter. Montague got the disc, found the far side poach pretty easily, and Sakai flowed from there. Good adjustment from co the coaching staff to go horizontal where all the cutters are viable, and great execution from Montague to find him.
So crisp offense from Sakai after the miscues in the first couple of O points. They put the pressure back on Machine. Yeah, Machine's O-line. Sample size of two, pretty reliant on the Huck so far. We'll see if they can change things up. They're going slightly upwind here, but with the quality of throwers in this line, that probably shouldn't make a difference. Yeah, I was just about to say, Cody, that both teams look very comfortable playing the long game here early in the state. In the early stages of this one, could set up for an exciting game with plenty of fireworks. Let's hope so. We'll see the machine offense once again. Kyle Rutledge getting that reset. Joe Wye with it now, right back to Pavel Giannis. Wye is streaking deep. The throw does not come, though. Quick exchange between Giannis and Rutledge. White with plenty of space underneath to make that grab. And now he's going to go for a big backhand looking for Paul Arters. Ben Snell in the area for Saka. He whiffs, but no one able to make him pay for it. That's a machine turnover. Arters the intended target. Garrett Martin catching that underneath. Reset to Eli Friedman. He gets Billy Katz. Katz can go for a big backhand looking for Snell. Arter's looking to get a little bit of revenge, and he gets a piece. Impressive ups and elevation from Paul Arter to get that block. Initially, I thought it was going to go over his head for the easy grab for Snell. Yeah, I think Snell had the same read as you, but the disc dropped a little bit. Arter is able to get in there and make a play. So Arter's able to save the misread on the other end with that impressive block. Machine has their second chance at the hold here as a result. Play comes to a halt with the disc in Rutledge's hand in the end zone. Speaking of U24 mixed gold, Kyle Rutledge, recent U24 mixed gold winner, following his senior year at Northwestern. Yeah, not the season Rutledge wanted with Northwestern. They were a team that I think a lot of team, a lot of people expected to make nationals last year. Kind of a rough year for them, but Rutledge still very much a very talented individual. And you're seeing that with hit the role he's playing on this machine O line right now. Great defense downfield from Sakai, just in everybody's pocket, heads up and switching as well. But when it's one on one, very tight. There's a freebie to Arters as Ben Snell gave up the underneath. Evangelitas rising up for that one. He's going to fake the big backhand. White with it now in the backfield. He resets to Yitting Howe, who finds an open Arters. Machine finding a little more space downfield now after struggling through the early moments of this possession. Contact between Evangelius and a couple of Sakai defenders. D.Y. Chen, I think the one probably called for the foul. Friedman just about set to get this disc back in play once everyone is set. Steps out for that big around to find White. High stall reset is completed. Giannis and then continues to Arters. And Arters to White for the long hold. Machine had to fight for it. They get at the end to tie this one back up. Yeah, fair play by Machine. Sakai was playing really tight defense all over the field, but Machine able to execute over and over again under pressure to grind it out and eventually punch in. Take a look at that Cats Huck. 
that just dropped a little faster than everyone except for Paul Orders expected. And here we go, Joe White on the give and go, able to follow it from the back side of the play. Doesn't get the first one, but reads the play, realizes he'll get the rebound after that. Eventually, Arters can find him for the machine hold. Yeah, impressive hang time by Arters, too. Looks like he went up a little too early, but in addition to the disc dropping a little quickly, he was able to kind of get that float, stay up there long enough to get the block and save the goal. Just Simon Montague talking to the Sockeye O-line. Surely addressing the junk looks that they've seen from Machine so far and how they want to counteract those. Bansfield puts up the big OI. Difficult catch. It's Montague with the disc in his hands at the moment. Goes up high for that reset. Free child finding an open Murray. Sheen sticking with this 2 4 1. So far, Saka able to work their way through it pretty comfortably. Quick disc movement now, sees the disc in the hands of Quizon ties for he drops it back, and then the hammer to Montague. Machine staying in this zone here in the red zone. Trent Dillon back to Freechild, and then Freechild to Quizon Tice for the score. Impressive zone O from Sakai. Yeah, great work. Freechild's exactly the guy that you want to have on the field for that type of non transitioning zone. Often teams will transition out of their zone in the last third of the field, but they're kind of leaving some potential on the table, especially against a team that might be slow on the disc. As long as the zone has time to reset, it's still pretty difficult to move it around. Free Child does a really good job of get, making sure the disc moves within one second of the catch so that that hole in the shifting zone is always there. But other teams, and including Machine in the past, have definitely seen results by not transitioning and staying in that compressed field where the wings and the deep in the zone actually have to guard less space. The machine offense back out there. Broken on their first point of the game, but have been able to hold sense and keep this game on serve. Both offenses adjusting, I think, to those early miscues. I was impressed by machine's willingness to grind through the short gainers on their last offensive possession and move all the way up the field. We talked before the point that in their recent history and in this game that they'd been a little reliant on their deep game, but that was a nice dimension to their offense that they showcased. There's another big pull from Foster. Machine will have to work out of less than ideal field position. Evangelitas working hard for that under, quickly finds White. Eric Schumacher, as we see the machine offense rotating a little bit. Well, it's able to get low to find Michael Pardo. White stepping around to hit Giannis. And Giannis hammers to the end zone for the score, finding Eric Schumacher in the hammer space. So Machine shows they're a little versatile too. They don't have to air it out either. They can work it down the field as well. Yeah, good work by Machine. Many of the Sakai defenders were orbiting to the strong side of the disc and underneath. So as soon as that orbit took place, they threw the hammer to the weak side, deep, exploited the shift right as it was happening. I have to say, Cody, it is Getting a little hot out here now. With the sun pretty much directly overhead. That's what your sun hoodie's for, Prentice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I feel safe from the sun, but 
I was a little bit sweaty. We, we've we've seen a number of Sakai players come over to the uh, the media tent to find shade, and you see some machine players struggling to find it in their tent over on the far sideline. You know, it, it, it felt pretty refreshing coming up here from Florida for this tournament here in Blaine, Minnesota. It felt pretty good this morning, but definitely warming up here as we get into the middle part of the day. We'll see how that takes a toll on these players. Yeah, the U.S. Open is a little more forgiving, I think, in that regard, though. The rounds here, are, well, the space between game times is two hours and 15 minutes, so players will definitely have time to recover between games. I think only three games today for every team in every division as opposed to four, so not as bad as it could be. We have another offsides call on machine, and maybe it's worth noting, you know, it's still very early. I don't think I'd call either team tired yet, but Sakai is coming off of a first round matchup that they that they won. Machine playing in their first game of the day. No, worth noting for sure, Sakai, one of the deepest teams in the field here, though. One through 27, quite talented. Not that Machine isn't, but Sakai has a wealth of players to draw from with the Seattle scene, feeding them. Players who are a few and still in high school. Uh, Tony Venieri is on this team and is a, uh, a recently graduated senior, he senior headed to Oregon. And all the way up to hometown guys like Simon Montague back in Seattle after playing at Carleton College and Matt Rader who's in Chicago but still playing for them. Sakai quickly out across midfield. And now get it to the very middle of the field. It's Jannon able to hit Kasednar past a big layout from Jeff Holm. Jannon looking for Kasednar for the reset, able to find him. Raider easily elevates for that one. Oh, and Kasednar is stuffed. Looks like we have a foul call. Peter Graffy with the point block. I don't think he thought he committed a foul. I'm trying to take a listen here to the observers. Do you mean contested foul or come to me? Okay, foul is called. My ruling is there's not a foul. All disc. Hold on. You hear from the observer, no foul from Graffy. So Machine takes over, and Kasednar still looks pretty upset with that one. We'll take another look. Cody, what do you think? I look pretty clean to me. It sounded clean in real time, too. The observers agreed with you, so Machine has a chance to break. They already have one in this game that came on the first point of the game. Joey Kennedy dropping back that reset to Stefan Mantz. Big bendy forehand from Nathan Goff. That one ends up on the turf. That was always going to be a tough catch for Jeffrey Weiss. Strange decision by Goff. And Kasednar unmarked looking to the end zone just past the bid from his cutter downfield Bryce Dixon. coming back the other way, but Dixon gets it right back, coming off his mark downfield to knock that throw from Dex Draymond down to the ground. Sednar to the striking, free child for the easy open goal. A couple of turnovers from Sakai, but they hold on for the holds. Free child did a great job to recognize that his dump defender was playing even with him, and there aren't very many players in the division that can keep up with Dylan Free Child on a 30 yard sprint starting evenly. Exploits it there to cash in. Similar to the way that Joe White scored from behind the play in this end zone going toward the bottom of the screen, 
taking advantage of that off dump defender, not the primary dump to score a blind. As a result, Machine left to Rue a couple of break opportunities. Looks like they had a pretty heavily rotated D line out there. Not some of those guys that they'd put out on a top D line when they're really looking for a break, but a couple of opportunities passed them by as a result. Coach Andy Nielsen out there talking to the Chicago O-line. Uh, Nielsen is an assistant for the U-20 USA Juniors team. Was in the previous cycle that won gold and was selected again recently for the upcoming 2020 cycle. Alongside former Sakai Reed Koss who will be the head coach. Another big bendy pull into the end zone. I think we're going to have to get used to seeing that. That's great work. Uh, Machine's starting 10 yards deep in their end zone right now. So Christian Foster really earning his hypothetical salary. It's Rutledge in his own end zone where he's been for quite a bit in this game. It's Arders with it now. Impressive matchup defense downfield. You saw John Randolph taking that look away from Evangelitis. The machine still struggling to clear their own end zone. Shanahan with the disc. Finally, some yardage downfield. Michael Pardo able to find some space. Evangelitis beating Randolph underneath this time. Oh, it's a miscommunication between Rutledge and Arders leading to the turnover. Foster going to pick up and air it out, looking for Trent Dillon right away. Rutledge giving chase. That one hanging in the air a long time. Dillon goes up, unable to make the catch. Not sure if he would have been able to toe the line anyway. A tricky work with the back line, but Dillon did a really good job of sealing out with his body, pushing Arders a little, or Rutledge a little bit under the disc, going up with his right hand. You saw him apologize to his teammate. He felt he should have come down with it, but. Machine fumbles their pike play. Two in the stack deep, back of the stack under. Carter's surveying the field. You could tell he was wanting the big throw from the moment he got the disc. He's looking for how downfield. It's hanging up for days in that wind. Falls harmlessly to the turf. Yeah, bad timing for Arters there. Strong gust happened right around when he put it up. Yeah, big gust held that one up in the air seemingly forever. Sakai is really playing outstanding defense right now. In addition to being physically fit and fast downfield, their handler defense is outstanding. Obviously, when you dump to the open side, you're positionally ahead of the guy that was marking you. So in theory, you have a step to get open up line. But the Sakai marks are really active in crossing over to cut that off. So Sakai calls a timeout to set their offense. Looking for another break. We'll take a quick timeout. teams coming out of this timeout. Sockeye looking for a break. Their D-line has been awfully impressive so they can convert this chance to increase their lead. It's Ben Snell with the disc. Quite the amalgamation of colleges on the Sockeye team. Ben Snell, uh, North Carolina college champion 2015. Powerful cut from Trent Dillon to beat Rutledge underneath. D.Y. Chen beats Arders. 
Foster wide open. Duncan Lynn hits Snell on the little up line at a little too tight. Snell unable to make the catch. Shanahan has it for a machine. Once again, everything really tough for Machine. Now went up in the air, and Evangelidis makes the catch. Big contact with Foster, able to hang on. And now Rutledge wide open in the end zone. So after the impressive grab from Evangelidis, it's quick for Machine. And Zane they're able Rank to get that hold. Zane Rankin throws the assist against his former team, leading Kyle Rutledge into the end zone. And Rankin with a goal in this game as well. So. He's finding the stat sheet early against his former club. But again, the pressure from Sakai is there. They almost got the block on Evangelides. You can see it's a really close play from Foster. No malice in the contact, but certainly contact. Evangelides going up so strong to make that catch. No fear of the contact. Calls a timeout on the field as both teams look to gather. So 5-5 five, five through 10 points. Each team has one break. But it kind of feels like Machine is just really trying to hang in there right now. I think Sakai has felt like the better team. Would you agree with that assessment, Cody? Yeah, early on, Sakai had some jitters, especially on offense. But uh, once the Machine O-line's on the field, it's there are no easy baskets anywhere. Sakai is really, in the mi really making them work for every pass. And on the flip side, Sakai has really steadied themselves on offense. And their decision making has been pretty strong. In general, I think for the last three years, it would be fair to say that Sakai, with their depth of talent and strong system, the only team that really gets turnovers on Sakai is Sakai. <laughs> and they've so far been locked in on their decision making absent the first few points. It's going to be tough to get the disc off of them when they're playing like this. And perhaps that's why Machine called that timeout. I think sensing, you know, being on the cusp of falling behind in this game. Try to lock in that defense that they saw success with the first couple of points. I think Machine still has a puncher's chance, obviously. Oh, absolutely. I mean, tie game on serve. Yeah, especially because in the past we've seen Machine upset Sakai at uh, Pro Flight in 2017 by playing junk looks that tested Sakai's patience and eventually got them to throw the disc away. Admittedly, in that game, uh, Machine took an early lead and Sakai failed to close late. But the, the decision-making vulnerability that I talked about, Machine is well positioned to exploit it or to at least bring it back to prominence. See Montague puts the hand up to signify the stop it's due to a pick. The classic pike play, front of stack deep, back of stack under, trying to get the disc in free child's hands. And free child hits Kosednar sprinting across. Montague with that big looping fake. Raider hitting Quizon Tice. Free child marked by Bansfield. But a wide open under for Dixon. Now he and Free Child are off to the races. Free child drops it back to Kasednar. Initiate the give and go. He's on Tice just outside the end zone. Montague with the around to Dixon. That was a little awkward. Looked like he was going to find the defender and maybe milk that one in, misjudging how far away it was from him. So as a result, Sakai turns it over right when it looked like they were about to convert that red zone opportunity. Another timeout coming up. A curious play from Dixon. I'm, I don't know that he could have gotten there if he had run through it the whole way. 
Perhaps not a timeout. The observer seemed to make a tee. Now it looks like we do have a timeout. But called not on the goal line there, so Machine will be starting in their own end zone, correct? Well, he never actually picked it up. So I feel like I don't think you can call a timeout unless you actually have the disc. Right. So I don't know. I'd, maybe they just talked about it, but I feel like it's an invalid timeout until he picks it up. And if he had picked it up and called timeout right there, then yes, he would be there. But I think it was on the ground. But. Yeah, I, I, we didn't see him pick up the disc, and I think that was probably the cause of the confusion there. So we'll see what the situation is once these two teams come out of the timeout. But either way, Machine will have a chance to get this break after the red zone turnover from Sakai. Something I noticed before the timeout, obviously Sakai ended up turning the disc, but early in the play, you saw Dylan Freechild try and throw the around, Bansfield lay out on the mark, and Freechild throw up field and go get the give and go and gain like 20 yards. Something that allows him to do that is how balanced he stays when he, when he pivots, so that if his mark over commits, he's not off weight himself. He can easily go back the other way. He does it all the time when he's looking for break throws and give and goes near the end zone. Right. He's just very balanced on the disc. He keeps his weight over his center of gravity. You get a look at the weather here. We've mentioned the heat and the wind so far in this game. I, I would guess that it's a little bit warmer than that listed 81 degrees at the moment. At least it feels warmer than that. So we see Machine coming back to the way, a sliding grab from Tim Schock. Barker able to reset to Walden Nelson on Gilon now, looking off the open bands field. Nelson comes underneath for that one. A pick call will bring play to a stop, but I think Nelson's going to be able to keep the disc here. The disc is back in play. Nice forehand from Weaver to Barker, and Machine is knocking on the door. Uh, Bansfield, a bit awkward, but he went up awfully casually for that, unable to make the one-handed grab, so Machine coughs it up. And now Monte going to be wide open here as Sakai looking to fast break the other way. And that one popping up in the air to give a couple Machine defenders a chance at it, and that one's knocked away by Goff. So both teams showing some laziness in the red zone. Yeah, both a little cavalier with the disc, I think. No matter who scores this point, the other side will go off kicking themselves. They both knew they had a shot. Bansfield secures that one with two hands. Now as to go for a big backhand looking for Barker. Raider in the area, Dixon giving chase. And Dixon takes it away from his own teammate. Barker didn't look like he ever really had a chance at that one. Once again, the machine transition defense leaving a little to be desired. Raider going to go for the laser forehand. That one comes out awfully low, but it's saved by Kosednar. Great dig to maintain possession for Sakai, and he flips it to Quizon Tice. And he is ruled to be in the end zone for the score. Bit of a weird point, awkward back and forth a couple times, but Seattle does get the hold in the end. Yeah, tough shot from Raider and not his best execution. The cutter definitely had space, but you want to put that arcing outside in a little bit to give the guy a good read on it. Obviously, he didn't mean to throw him short, so clearly we're not talking about what he meant to do. But bailed out by Kassetner's great grab to change his direction and lay out backwards. We really look at Bansfield's speculative backhand hook that Raider uses the side advantage to body out the receiver and Dixon cleans up. Great catch from Kassedner coming back to the disc. Flips to a jumping quiz on Tice. And uh, it wasn't the prettiest, but another Sakai hole. And Cody, you mentioned just a couple moments ago that whoever doesn't score that point is probably going to walk off the field kicking themselves. Machine, really a glorious opportunity to get the break there and just some casual play from Bansfield costing them that opportunity. We've talked about how high powered and how efficient the Sakai offense can be. 
Don't expect Machine to have a whole ton of chances at that good at converting breaks. Yeah, only uh, Machine's fourth break chance this game. They've converted one, but you're right, Sakai, and three of those were in the first point. So I think their first break chance since when they actually broke. Zone from Sakai. Evangelitis is fouled on the throw. Thomas Kolchak knew it right away. Kolchak checks it back in. Rankin airing it out for White. White gets up over the defender, Milan Ravenel, for that one. White with the easy forehand to Giannis in the end zone. So Joe White shows what he's capable of offensively. The ups there to make the grab over the defender and then the easy little flick to the end zone for the hole. Joe White already making his presence known with the machine in his first tournament with them. He's been beating him deep. Right there he comes down with a little bit of a laser huck from Rankin. Has to make the play all the way over. Ravnell flips in for the hold. Now White kind of taking over the role that I'm used to seeing Pavel uh, Giannis play. Essentially the hub thrower that they start downfield to try and get the offense moving. They've been centering to Giannis a lot. That used to be uh, Yiding who they would center to him and start Giannis. But an interesting ripple effect of adding a player of Joe White's caliber is sliding other people into their new roles. Yeah, White just a rising senior at Carleton, which is really kind of crazy to think about. I think, you know, he's showing in this game and really has shown for the last couple of seasons that he's one of the premier cutters in the men's club division. So a bright future for him ahead. Really the only thing that's held him back in his career is his health. Yeah, He's injuries. played so much ultimate over the last few years. Yeah, his, his body's been banged up a little bit. You saw him, he missed out on regionals with Carleton. This past college season, I think, you know, Carlton shockingly missing out on nationals this year. I think it's pretty a pretty safe bet that they don't do that if Joe White is at full health. Certainly far less likely. <laughs> Machine zone transition after three throws. Well, they're calling their transition word, but their wall doesn't seem to have the memo yet. But now Jannon is the target of the end zone, but that one is snatched away by Goff. That's what Machine's looking for, a rough decision in transition. So, chalk one up for the game plan. Goff has had a couple of nice track down Ds in that end zone. Catch under pressure there by Graffy. Mance to Nelson, gives it right back. Mance eyeing the forehand, looking for Holm downfield. Montague loses his balance a bit. Holm able to make the catch as a result. This machine once again in the red zone looking to break. Graffy looking for shock, but shock unable to wriggle free. Stagnant from machine. But Matt Mance able to hit for the reset and then the throw to Shock from Weiss for the score. So there it is, Machine finally capitalizes. They get the break. They're gonna put themselves on the verge of taking half here. Here's the interception that started that possession. Nice defense from Goff. But also just a rut. Sakai's decision. There wasn't enough room to throw Janet open to speed because there were there were only eight yards left between them in the back of the end zone or a finite amount of space. And you can't hang it up when it's uh, Goff, who I believe is 6'4", against Janet, who's 5'9". You're asking for a turnover with that decision, which is exactly what we talked about. So credit to Goff for cleaning it up, but Sakai didn't set themselves up for success there. So just like that, Machine is able to flip the script. 
And on this D point, Joe White crosses over to the D line. And uh, Alex Evangelides, who's been, I think, a little bit both ways, but has certainly played some O points. So machine stacking a little bit for this slide up win, maybe, with some of their more experienced throwers. Evangelides is not someone who you maybe think of as a great thrower, but after all these years in the elite circuit, is a very cool presence on the disc. Chris Hedner with the disc for Sakai. A little bit of junk from Machine. Five throw transition. Dylan cutting from the sideline to the middle to get open there. Now hitting Raider, who's marked by White. Raider going to float that one to the end zone, and that's a pretty throw. Golson able to run onto it easily. Sakai gets the quick hold. Yeah, beautiful edge from Raider to fade that into the back shoulder space. A lot of players will put that flat out into space, which makes it more of a foot race between the defender and the receiver. Uh, but Raider puts that back shoulder edge on it to fade it into the path where the defender isn't anticipating. Really throws his man out of the or throws the defender out of the play. You gotta love to see that from Matt Raider. Obviously a huge threat in the deep space as a 6'4 athlete, but if he can get if he can come under and feed those throws in stride to other receivers, that's almost impossible to stop. So at 7-7, seven, seven, this point is for half. We'll uh, expect to see some stacked lines from both teams here, I imagine. No new faces, it looks like, for the, well, Zane Rankin is over from defense for Machine's O-line on this point. And oh, the Sakai D-line looks largely the same. No free child, no Dylan. So Sakai trusting their starters to get it done. There is, of course, advantage to taking half in a game. It's kind of like a half break. Certainly. And you definitely don't want to be down a break at half. No. Foster with the big spinning pull. That one bounces and is stopped by Rutledge. It's Giannis with it. Looking for Arters, but a nice mark from Chen. Takes it away initially. Do you watch Chen's playing great heads up defense off of handlers? He has a good internal clock on when the thrower is looking up field and when he's looking dumb. Evangelitas wide open. Near poach block from Kolchak. Fingertip save by Pardo. Arters has it now. Pick call near turnover, but Rankin able to get the cut going again and save it. Would have been a turnover if he'd been, a, been unable to do so as, as the disc goes back to Arters. In on six, a lot of Sakai around that front, part of the stack that could triangulate and probably get four counts out of it. Rank into Pardo. Joe White gets Snell again on that backside up line. It was a near fumble from White, but able to hang on. Giannis quickly to Arters. Back to Giannis. Back to Arters for the score. So the handlers take over in the red zone for Machine, and they hold for the half. Yeah, Foster got leveraged a little bit on the around. I think he might have half-heartedly called for a switch, but it was a, a little bit late. Uh, Chen not able to pick up on it, and it's an easy give-go goal for Machine to take half. So Machine enters the break, up one break but still so much to play for. It's been an exciting first half. We'll be back for the second in just a few moments.
Jay Frood. What an incredible layout catch. On free child, and Frood comes down with it. and make the grab. Welcome back for the second half here between Chicago Machine and Seattle Sockeye. Machine starting the second half on offense up a break. It's a fun first half. Hope it sets up that way for a fun second half. It's Giannis finding an open Evangelitis. Evangelitis snapping a big forehand right away just outside the end zone. Quick continue from Schumacher to the end zone for Howe. So just what you want to start the second half for Machine. They get a very quick, clean hold. Yeah, it looks like a, a missed switch from Sakai there. Billy Katz let his man run through, and then a couple downstream effects from there. Failed to switch on, and it was an easy completion. It was actually Katz. Yeah, sorry. I, I, got a, I got dyslexic there on, uh, on the catch. It was not getting how. It was Eric Schumacher, 61, not 16. But eating how it was in the play, that was the guy <laughs> that the deep switched on to that left the open guy. <laughs> so it was like the wing. It was, a, it was a rotation, not a switch, rotation. By the way, it was a picture-perfect O start to the second half for Machine. Quick look around the division while we're just sitting here. Truck stop is up big on Nomadic Tribe. Buzz Bullets are up 8-6 on Revolver, and Ring of Fire is up 8-5 over Pony. So Pony's still struggling a bit. 
in their 2019 campaign. Machine starts us off here with a big OI backhand pull. A little slow to get down, so the center to Montague gains them like 20 yards. Freechild has it now inside the midfield circle. And Machine playing a little soft downfield, trying to break up the pull play, but Sakai very poised, continuing to hit the, the post player. Because Edner evacuates right as Dylan was looking for the reset, but Dylan's able to hit him on the strike. Sedner looking for Freechild in the end zone, and he elevates to make that grab. Impressive play by Freechild over Ross Barker. And then the emphatic spike. Yeah, Dylan living up to his nickname. Looked like he was going to holster then when you least expect it. <laughs> That's when Spike still attacks. Yeah. Kassender, seen that throw a lot today from various teams throwing up the four side sideline. Uh, Raider tried to throw this one earlier. And Kassender does a better job putting it out, giving the receiver a chance to read it. Not as much space as prior attempts at this throw, so Free Child has to body out and make the catch. See a young audience member on the sideline. Not too much of a crowd here, but you know, it is Friday morning. I imagine a lot of locals probably have work or school. That's probably not probably not school. It's uh, early August, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like some schools start in August, though. <laughs> the back to school sales start in like July, so <laughs> I don't know. Foster launching a massive backhand into the end zone. These pulls have been an asset for Sakai, essentially forcing Machine to go at least 70 every time. He's been so consistent with them. Don't think he's thrown one out of bounds yet either. Uh, pretty honest D from Sakai here. A little bit of switching, but no set junk. You see Jan John Randolph taking the Joe White matchup. Martyrs able to get a big chunk on an open under. After the big fake backhand from White. Sakai, Sakai is in pretty tight match, but with opportunistic switching, and it's, it's really a, a lesson in how defenders can help each other here. White wide open, and then the mark not able to get there in time, and Rutledge goes up under pressure. Big grab from Kyle Rutledge in the end zone for the machine hold. Yeah, again, machine holds, good offense, but you have to be pretty happy for Sakai. There were pressure on a lot of those looks. As much as I was praising Sakai's ability to play tight D and switch, Machine was doing a good job to stay one step ahead of it and find the open look, like to Joe White here. White puts a speculative shot out into space for Rutledge against Golson, but Rutledge able to elevate and make the play. The U24 mixed teammates connecting for a goal. Rutledge has spent most of his time today in the backfield for Machine, but impressive athleticism to get up for that grab. So we have our first dog sighting here on the sideline at the US Open. Dog on camera three. <laughs> he looks like a good boy. He really does. Now, appropriate for the North to have a Husky. They're Husky, people have Huskies down in Florida and I, I feel like it's borderline animal cruelty to have a dog down like that down in Florida. That is awful actually. But back to the Frisbee that doesn't involve dogs. <laughs> Graffy with the pull. Yeah, Graffy opts for the I.O., even though the O.I. has really been carrying well with the wind. It's a bit of a quick drop that nets Sakai the brick mark. Shannon does well to punish Shock's help deep. Now a little confusion downfield for Sakai as they lose yards on the reset to Montague. Free child able to get open under to connect the cutters to the handlers a little better. So Sakai looking to punch in this opportunity. 
Montague hitting Murray. They're stuck on that far sideline for now. We have a foul call. Yeah, in this short field, this is the time when Dylan Freechild has been and, I mean, ideally will continue to take over for Sakai. But he looks to be clearing as Sakai moves the disc wide to Bryce Dixon. And Dixon continues to queeze on Tice to the end zone for the easy score. It's been all offense here for both teams to start the second half. Sockeye still in need of a couple of breaks, though. And that's not something they've been able to find since their first D-line point of the game. Take another look at that crisp red zone offense for the fish. And Sakai will take a timeout, perhaps to try to set up something defensively. As I said, they've not been able to find a whole lot of success on that side, despite all the pressure they've been able to create. You know, we've mentioned numerous times, Cody, that it seems like every throw, particularly early in possessions, is really very difficult. Every cut is really difficult to get open, but Machine has been able to survive it. And right now they, they have the lead as a result. Yeah, the last few SOC ID points, they've done very well at switching in terms of switching to stop the first look. But Machine is doing a really good job of presenting a second look quickly. And that's, to some extent, letting Machine off the hook. If Sakai, I would like to see Sakai try playing a little more honest and just, <laughs> it's a little less sophisticated, but try and out-athlete them for a little bit because Sakai is very, very quick downfield. And if you get 90% pressure on 10 throws, maybe that's better than 100% taking away one and giving away the second option for free 10 times in a row. Not that one is the clear course of action, but we saw Sakai make life very hard on Machine in the first half that way. So it would be interesting to try both looks. And Sakai, their player to watch in this game is Jacob Jannon. It's pretty influential early in this game, has been a little quiet since. But he was a member of the Next Gen Tour. Along with half of Sakai. <laughs> Big Seattle influence on that Next Gen Tour. He's been named the best chef on Sakai. Yeah, uh, Trent Dillon gave me some insider info before the game that Jacob Jan is the best chef on the team. Trent might be a little partial because they're, they're roommates and he benefits from the cooking a lot, but uh, he can make all kinds of international cuisine. He lived in Ghana for a year, so he can make Ghanaian food. And yeah, Jan comes from an ultimate family as well with his brother Eli, a former Rhino player and Blackbird player, and his dad, Jay Jannon, co-coaching Oregon Ego with Dylan Freechild. You see Arders hitting Giannis on that reset, and he gets called for travel. Cat saying he took a few too many steps there after the catch. Giannis didn't seem to disagree too much. Evangelitas eyeing the downfield space, but comes back to Giannis with the off-field reset throw, and now looking for Joe White. Joe White with the full extension layout grab. Joe White having a big game for Machine. Another highlight reel grab for the young cutter to get the clean hold. Yeah, not the best execution on the huck, but Joe White able to elevate his game to bail out his teammate. Does a good job catching or to hang on through the ground contact. Take another look here. Giannis, typically a very strong hooker, puts a little too much juice on that, but Joe White willing to lay out with his left hand, make that catch uh, not trailing edge, and survive the contact for the hold. Is the opposite of trailing edge leading edge? I guess that would make sense, yeah. I can get on board with it at least. All right, let's go for it. Either way, it was an impressive play <laughs> by White. You know, I, I myself, I think, was doubting his ability to make that catch. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to get there after the throw from Giannis looked too low and blady. But, you know, I, I think White proving that it's a mistake to not give him the, ben the benefit of the doubt 
on just about every play. Yeah, he's been he's been a force. Nice pull from Bansfield riding that OI edge. Lots of hang time. Brave from Dixon pass. to catch that in the air. Just a little bit of transition from Machine. They've typically been out after about five. Raider catches it at midfield and immediately launches a big forehand to Graffy in the area. <laughs> Both players whiff, but Graffy going up in the air, able to get the defense as Golson will make the play, but it looks like he's going to make a foul call. Let's see if we can listen in on that conversation. I, you literally came down as I was jumping up and took my arm. No, I didn't no, even make it off the ground. We were we were both bodies in the same position. You initiated contact into me the same way I was going to you, right? It was the exact same, right? And then the end, they both of it, they fell to the ground. So it's not a foul. Okay. Is it a contested but foul? I was back. That's ridiculous. Are we contesting and sending it back, or is when do you want to come to me for ruling? Hard to catch, right? It went over both of us. They hit the ground, right? But at the same time, I mean, I but at the same so, time, yeah, right. But at the okay. same time, we both were vying for the same space, right? It was the same body contact. It was going is either going to come to me for a ruling, or is it going to be contest? Contest. I will go to you. you come to me. Yeah. My ruling is it was not a foul. Can I just, yeah, yeah because, like incidental contact. You guys were both jostling, and then the disc went over both your heads. So we heard from the observer there. I, I have to say, Cody, I strongly agreed. Graffy clearly went straight up in the air, and I mean, both players were really equally responsible for any contact, and I also don't think it had any effect on the play. Yeah, I, I see where Golson was coming from, though, in that he didn't really get to jump, but I don't think it was a foul. The observer certainly didn't think so. Now Machine trying to come back the other way. It's Banfield with the disc. This was kind of a little stagnant, though. He doesn't have to go for an audacious hammer. A couple of players in the area, but that's easily intercepted by Trent Dillon. Just nothing else for Bansfield to attack. Let's see if Sakai can avoid the decision-making trap again. They've fallen into it twice this half in that, in the face of that transition junk from Machine, just throwing uh, into the deep. But Bansfield gifting it back. Leaving grab by Matty Russell. Play stops as a result of downfield contact between Freechild and Goff. ruling from the observer saying that it was a foul on Goff. Free child not too happy about it either. Well, it's the kind of call a ref would make. And now we have an injury substitution. Fortunately, I missed who came off for Machine, but it's Ross Barker checking in. He'll be on the mark on Russell. Freechild to Raider, had a lot of space from Bansfield. Now an easy throw to Freechild for the Sockeye score. That's the throw Raider was looking for before when Kassetner <laughs> had to bail him out. Great execution up that same third. Puts it out into space. Freechild had plenty of separation. And Matt Raider really coming on as a thrower this game. Not that he hasn't been that for a while, but. And you also see the danger of Freechild there. One moment he has the disc in his hands, the next moment he's blistering past you downfield for an easy goal. Yeah, you can see a motif of Sakai's offense. Uh, Free Child's done this a couple times, and it's the same throw that we've been talking about. When they cut into the open side, uh, some teams will have you cut horizontally across for kind of a functional flat break, but Sakai loves to run into the open side and go deep up the sideline that they just came off of, or that they just cut toward. Both are good, and especially if you have throwers who are willing and able to put that shot out to space, it really forces defenders not to linger in that lane and poach. And it, it punished Goff there, who was a little late. Just hung out in the open side lane for one second, because it is good poach if your cutter isn't going to punish you. But Free Child accelerates deep, and without hesitation, Raider punishes it. So Sock ID back to work. We'll see how they approach it. Machine made a great play to keep their possession alive. Last O point. You know, one thing for the Sockeye D line, we know that Foster is going to send down a great pull, which causes Machine to start deep 
offensively. Yeah, Machine consistently starting like 15 yards behind where Sakai starts. So far though, Machine has been able to weather that storm very well. And they're pretty quickly out across midfield in this possession. Yeah, Sakai looked like they were backing a little bit for those first couple of throws. Foster calling a travel on Evangelitas to bring play to a stop. Gets back in at stall six. Giannis looking for the reset. Able to find White at the front of the stack. Harder's over the top of the defender to get it back to White. Giannis quickly to Arters, looking for White, but a poach block interception takes it away for Sakai. Hausman with the play defensively, now Sakai looking to go quickly the other way. A call on Foster, stops play once again. A nice work off the middle of stack from Julian Hausman, realizing that his cutter was pretty dead and that the obvious next pass was the up line. Hausman, the one responsible for the sockeye possession, looking to air it out downfield, but that one too far for his cutter, Duncan Lynn. Gave it a bid, unable to make the catch. And really, this feels like a pretty pivotal point in this game. A break for sockeye would have tied it up at 11s. They were wasteful with that chance. See Giannis put it back into play, breaks it to Evangelides who immediately shoots. Airing it out long for Arders, plenty of space to himself back there. Quick throw to White is awkward, but White able to make the play. And then wide open to Howe in the end zone. So Machine nearly gives it the break, but they're able to maintain their two goal lead. Both teams D-line offenses have been a little sketchy with their decision making this game and in ultimate in general that seems acceptable because often often in the modern game your best players are playing offense but both these teams are so deep and so skilled that there's no reason for them not to run real offense and make sound decisions on turnovers so I wonder I would like to be a uh, fly on the wall of both huddles to see if Andy Nielsen and uh, Dave Hogan and Mike Cobble agree, but it's tough to watch. And we, after that point, have a heat level warning, heat level one, so we've got a three minute stoppage. Both teams will take a breather and so will we but plenty of game left we got a good one gets you closer to the players and personalities you care about with game video, in-depth written and video analysis. Uh, he's going to take off deep, but what he does is very simple. Documentary shorts. And we've played Fruit Squad before, and it, it just feels a little bit harder to lose this year. And a whole lot more. To get your subscription or learn more, go to ultiworld.com slash subscribe. So, if you miss it, we are in a heat break. We've got a couple of minutes of that left. But Cody, I think you have an update for us on some other action around the fields here. Yeah, uh, looking over in the women's division, Medellin Revolution is up 8-7 on Oregon Schwa. A little maybe closer than you expect from the 1-3 game. 
and San Francisco Fury up 11-9 on Molly Brown. And DC Scandal, 8-5 over Boston Brute Squad. Over in the mixed division, Seattle Mischief Mixtape is up 8-5 on San Francisco Mischief. Australia's Ellipses is up 8-6 over DC Space here. And Minneapolis Dragon Thrust up 8-5 over Boston Snake Country. Are they Boston? That's right, yeah. Okay. And uh, that uh, that Ellipsis Space Heater game is being filmed by Ulti World will be available to those of you with an Ulti World subscription. If you don't have one of those already, you can get one over at ultiworld.com slash subscribe. And those subscriptions really do so much to allow us to bring you the coverage that we do, including this live stream. And we will try to keep you as up to date as possible on all those scores from across the U.S. Open over on ultiworld.com slash live. Here we're setting up for a good finish, I think, Cody. Machine up 12 to 10, but really been a very even game from the very beginning. Yeah, Machine, both teams have really settled down in terms of their offense. Both teams struggling to get turns on the other. Still a few, but for the most part, pretty clean offense against tight defense. Seems like a just an all-around a quality game, a good model for any up-and-coming player to learn from. Ross Barker has a nice pull for Machine. They've cycled through a few pullers in this game, but that one I think has been their best of the bunch so far. Forcing Sakai to work out of their own end zone. And Machine a little switchy to start, trying to lock it down in transition. This is the moment that's made Sakai turn it over the most, but they seem to be equal to it this time. Trent Dillon hitting Dixon. And Dillon, I, I would have to say, has been pretty quiet in this game, not had the impact I think you'd expect of a player of, of his stature. Yeah, through the assist on the break, but his role has floated a little between offense and defense for Sakai, and in a largely offensive game, he's mostly been playing D. He finds Montague there, and works hard to get it back. That one pops up from Kassedner, but Dylan playing the every other game right now. And Dylan juggles that one, is able to hang on. Gets the extra yard. Montague with the air bounce to Dixon for the goal. Impressive O-line to play for Seattle. Yeah, Seattle really focusing on their handler set there with the top of stack involved as well, but you can see everybody else trying to make space for that backfield game issuing the, the undercuts, especially in the last third of the field, as is typical. And Cody, we got a tweet from our own Keith Rayner. says, he feels like these Sockeye jerseys need a secondary color, a trim to make the gray pop. What, what do you think of the, uh, the Sockeye grays? Well, Sockeye has done gray before. Uh, and on their old gray, the writing was in red. So, I see where he's coming from. It's essentially like this, but with a smaller fish. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do like the white lettering, I think. But, yeah, I, I have to agree with you, Keith. Red somewhere in there would, I think, make it feel a little more complete, at least to fit the Sakai identity. Yeah, I think uh, something that was pointed out to me between games is that in addition to this heathered look on their jerseys, it's a... It's actually a heathered gray. The pants are also textured. So Sakai really on the, the leading edge of frisbee <laughs> fashion. No hope. That translates to a late comeback here, needing a couple of breaks late against Chicago Machine. Breaks have been hard to come by for both teams. Machine up two to one in that area. And also have that half break advantage, having started the second half on offense. Yeah, 
Nathan Kwan taking the Pavel Giannis matchup. Kwan in his first year playing for Sakai. Have a foul downfield to bring play to a halt. Hopefully the chippiness doesn't increase too much here as this game winds down. It's a contested foul. Russell taps the disc back in play. Shanahan able to sneak it in to Giannis for the reset. And tough handler defense looks to have a turnover, but Russell called for a foul on the throw. But you see the impact Nathan Kwan can have in the handler space defensively. Locking up Giannis for those few seconds. Pretty stationary for Machine. White goes across the field for Pardo. Giannis looking to the end zone for Vangelidis. Under pressure from Katz, unable to hang on. So the Sockeye defense earns a turnover. Yeah, that grind finally uh, netting Sockeye a turnover. Nothing special, just if you make people work enough times, eventually something's going to go awry. See if they can value possession on this turnover. So for what it's worth, the, worth the soft cap horn blew during this point. So we'll be adding two to the high score at the end, which and appears to be 12. Yeah, a great throw from Quan to the youngster, Tony Veneri, streaking deep. So Sakai finally able to take advantage of these break opportunities. They level things up at 12. So game is to 14, just to confirm. Take another look at the turnover. Evangelidis able to get a hand on it, but under duress from Katz, it's a tough play to hang on. Here we see Quan put out a beautiful shot to space that just sits. Really difficult to hold the IO there and hold the flatness, or to make it eventually sit flat, but Quan does a really good job with it. Doesn't let it get away from him on the down one either, and Veneri able to run it down. Veneri on the practice team last year as a 17-year-old, fully on the roster now as an 18-year-old. So a couple of newcomers to Sakai connecting for that break score. Yeah, Veneri, one of the youngest players to make Sakai since uh, old man Matt Rader up here on his 10th season who also made it as an 18-year-old. I think he might have been 17 when he actually made it. But certainly good company to be in. Different styles of players, certainly, though. Veneri <laughs> more of a, a handler defender and Raider uh, a big man. Yeah, that Seattle pipeline, it's a pretty nice one to have feeding into your club system. Yeah, absolutely. Not certainly a, a representation, but there's been a lot of influx into Seattle that seems to have kind of eaten up the Seattle Pipeline spots. Uh, I know we have on the team, who grew up in Seattle? Simon Montague is from Seattle. Derek Morad, who's not playing this game, but is from Seattle. Xander Quizantais, I think, Northwest School, Tony Veneri, Raider, and Randolph. So a good representation, but with the, uh, the density of high quality players coming out of the Seattle youth scene, perhaps not quite as much as you'd think. Foster, one of those transplants. And really, he's been one of the stars for Sockeye, I would say, in this game. He hasn't done a whole lot offensively, but his pulls have been some of the really the biggest highlights in this game. He's pulling the other way now after that break. Yeah, and the quote-unquote upwind still puts it eight yards in the end zone with some float. And covers, to his credit. Joe White looking for the big one to Rankin giving chase. Easy grab for Rankin in the end. That is a dime from Joe White for the quick hold. 
Yeah. Great shot from Joe White here. Hopefully we'll have another look at it. Definitely not everybody's throw, but for Joe White's role on the team, absolutely his throw. Yeah, you see Rankin set up that cut by coming into the break side a little bit to set up the horizontal width. The rest of the cutters are flooded to that four sideline, which takes the stack out of the way and gives Joe White free reign to put it at whatever altitude he wants without worrying about the lane. And Rankin outreads Hasman, scores the easy bucket. Pretty nice game for Rankin against his former club. Oh, yeah. San Rankin, another uh, U24 alumni himself, making big plays. Yeah, recently moved to Chicago along uh, into the Midwest. I mean, pardon me, he moved to Chicago. But Matt Rader, also a Midwestern resident, but commuting to play for Sockeye for the season. There is speculation that he might end up on this machine team as well, but remains with the fish. Yeah, it's seemingly the one off-season addition that they missed out on machine. They seem to gobble up just about everyone else that was available. Well, I mean, let's not forget about Pony, the Death Star. <laughs> That's fair. Very fair. Grant Lindsley, of course, switching coasts to join Pony. Jack Hatchett. Alex Thorne. I the rich get richer, <laughs> as they say. But all shaping up for what should be a very fun season in the men's club division. we got a fun one here. Sakai trying to hold the force double game point. I saw on free child, they would reset to Montague. Yeah, Sakai's really not used to losing yards in that situation. So we'll see if the cutters can stay connected to the play. All the way back into their own end zone now, it's Raider. Jeff Weiss is doing a great job on Jacob Jannon, who works hard for the under there. But Jannon's got, Jannon's a much quicker player, but Weiss is really equal to it right now. Free child to Montague, but I think it's gonna come back as Von Allen has to come off due to injury. Free child talking to his team, saying we need to talk or we need to work vertically. So far they've been able to survive this pressure from the machine defense, but haven't been able to move it downfield a whole lot. Field taps it back in, stops that first reset look. Free child hitting Dixon further downfield. Chris Edner around to Dillon. Dillon to Dixon in the middle. Continue to Raider. Free child to Jannon. Sakai working it down the field, looking for this hold. One that they have to have to stay in this game. The call stops play. Disc in the hands of Trent Dillon. That one popping up a bit in the air. Free child goes up and is unable to make the catch. Graffy makes the interception after coming back down to the ground. So Machine will chance to break to win this one. Bensfield and Nelson exchange resets. Oh, great. Then, yeah, Nelson throwing an interception by Montague. Heads up defense with the poach. And the throw to the end zone for Kasednar gets the break. Machine had a chance to win on that point, but the heads up defensive play from Simon Montague saves it. Sockeye forces double game point. Yeah, Dylan's throw here gets popped up in that crosswind left to right. Graffy able to make the block, but Montague does smart. Tim Shock's trying to clear down the sideline, and Montague just peels off of him, reads the undercut. Just confident put out to space there from Jacob Jannon with Cassidy. That's the downwinder, so to put it into space, you usually want the edge up, which means the top of the disc is going to go to the wind, so it might get pushed down. But well done.
take a look at the Sockeye D line out there that will try to get this break. We do see crossovers for this D point, unlike the point for half. Well, it's pretty much just Dylan Freechild. But. but without them is Foster, Ben Snell, John Randolph, Duncan Lynn, Maddie Russell, Julian Hausman. Julian Hausman, as they get this, look for this break. It's the same machine O line. We have uh, Zane Rankin crossed over, and Yiding Hao is over, I believe, as well. But other than that, the usual suspects for them. That means Kyle Rutledge, Joe White, Paul Vianis, Alex Evangelidis, Paul Arders. So as the two lines going at it here. Classic zipper play to initiate from machine. Rankin pubs White and brings him under. That's fair. <laughs> Joe White does travel a lot. White laughing about it. See, he's drawn the free child matchup. Disc back in play. White looking to air it out for Arders. Foster in the area and a big bid. Gets a piece of the disc, a lot of contact. Great defensive play from Christian Foster. He comes up banged up on the play, but. Wow, that was, seems like he's walking, but crazy defense. Holding the back of his head. Take another look at this massive bid from Foster to save the game. Still hit Arters in the chest, but with the deflection, unable to make the catch. Yeah, Foster essentially dares Joe White to throw him back shoulder. Joe White says, okay. And but Foster's just been given a blue card for that bid. All right, I guess that was a blue card. I don't know. I'd like to take a, another look if we could. He did bid kind of blind, but it seemed like it was the second effort where there was actually contact. So, take another look, a quick another look. Yeah, there's, there's contact into the knee, which is always dangerous. So, you can see why the blue card was given, but again, Arters looks like not calling a foul. So, it is the Sockeye disc. Yeah, it's the second time in two games that we've seen a blue card come out with no foul call. So that's certainly interesting, and it was Foster who ended up the worst for wear as a result of the play. Still on the ground in considerable pain, but Sakai looking to break for the win. Ben Snell able to get open, and he finds a wide open Trent Dillon, but Arders is going to say that he was that open as a result of a pick. Sakai going into the win right now, and the win is definitely giving them a little bit of trouble. Gets back in play as Arders just catches up as a result of the pick. Free child to Dylan, and Dylan, that one slips out of his hand, I think. Certainly not the throw he was looking for. He coughs it up. Machine will come back the other way. Arders looking off white deep, now looking for him in the throw, and White was able to lose his defender, but the throw not there for Arders. Free Child committed his hips without getting his body in the way and was just dead to rights on that play if the throw had been reasonable. You could even hear him when he when it happened. But yeah. Joe White just got him to commit. And Free Child had a little celebratory clap after he saw the disc hit the turf. I think really just <laughs> feeling a little fortunate on that one. That him getting burned didn't cost the team the game. So Sakai takes over and Ben Snell will pick up and call timeout. Yeah, I, I love Sakai's aggressiveness in the, the last third of the field here. They're pretty egregiously fronting and just like daring machine to throw over the top. And they've almost gotten burned on it twice, but might as well make them work for it. And credit to machine for being confident. Like Arter's throw didn't land, but Joe White threw a good shot. Christian Foster doesn't make a great play. I mean, maybe a dangerous play. Uh, that's the game. Yeah, and I think Arters really want that throw back. I mean, White was very open. Tough to get the control on that blade, though. And so Sakai with their second chance to break here on the final point of this game. Yeah, we'll see if Machine comes out with anything with a curveball off the dead disc. Sakai will get a look at it, which is always dangerous. But 
They've gotten two turnovers this half off of transitions. Two turnovers off transitions and I think two off the wind. So Vert stack, not Sakai's preferred look this game. They started with it, but they eventually opted for horizontal. It's Snell marked by Nelson to start. The inside they're a little behind. Free child is able to adjust to make the grab. Looks like pretty honest for machine downfield. Snell saw it Dylan deep, decided to holster. Now it's in the hands of Free Child. Is that time in the game when some people tighten up and some people don't feel it? Got to look for it on the field. Breaks that were open before just don't seem open for some people. Dylan Freechild is not one of those people. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, not a man lacking for confidence. Uh, look for him to make a big play. It's Matty Russell coming underneath for Trent Dillon. And now cutting strike to get it right back. Freechild snaps that one to Hausman in the hands of John Randolph. Back to free child to Snell just outside the end zone at Sakai knocking on the door for the break to win this one. And Snell goes across the face to Matty Russell for the goal. Sakai breaks. They avoid the upset and get the win over Chicago Machine. Yeah, maybe I'm seeing what I want to see, but great work by Free Child to stay involved in this last point. Drifting near the disc. I mean, Snell throws the goal after a little bit of crowding, but drove him up the field. Fantastic game between two teams that clearly really wanted to win that one. Machine gave it everything they had. Sockeye had just a little bit too much. They pull off the late comeback, getting the break on the final point of the game. Both teams exchanging turnovers there back and forth on the final point. Hard to get much more exciting than that, but Sockeye emerges victorious 14 to 13 over Machine. Cody, you said before the game, we could maybe see a rematch between these two teams later in the bracket. Both teams certainly, I think, lived up to that billing in this game. Absolutely. Two high quality performances. Obviously, both teams will take things away from this game they want to work on, but I think we, our thoughts were confirmed. These are top tier teams in the country, top five at least. So wouldn't be surprised to see them meet again in the bracket. Well, it was definitely a good one. We have plenty more in store on ultraworld.com slash live. Thanks for tuning in. gets you closer to the players and personalities you care about with game video, in-depth written and video analysis. Uh, he's going to take off deep, but what he does is very simple, documentary shorts. And we've played Fruit Squad before and it, it just feels a little bit harder to lose this year. And a whole lot more. To get your subscription or learn more, go to ultiworld.com slash subscribe. <laughs>